Yo, what's going on, Epic7? I'm Sue, and this is my beginner's guide to Abyss Floor 109. Floor 109 will have you facing off against Sinful Angelica in what is arguably one of the most difficult floors of Abyss in all of Epic 7. Me, personally, I think it is the most luck-based floor in all of Abyss. It is very RNG-heavy. If you lose a lot during this floor, don't worry, you are not alone. That is a sentiment that is shared by a lot of people that face this floor because, well... There's just so many RNG mechanics, and the intended way to play the floor is just obnoxious. So, just like some of the other Abyss floors that we've done, namely 108, we're just going to circumvent the mechanics wherever possible, whenever we can. Sinful Angelica is accompanied by multiple Dust Mushrooms. They have an ultimate here, Self-Destruct Countdown, that does big damage to everyone on your team, and also blinds them. Additionally, whenever they die, they revive, right, and they give... And increase to Sinful Angelica's max health. So either you face tank the mushrooms, in which case they give a buff anyway to Angelica, or you kill them and they give a buff anyway to Angelica. That's really obnoxious. Additionally, she is accompanied by this Lich that has a massively powerful AoE attack that basically resets anytime one of the mushrooms dies. So you're just gonna be taking a ton of damage on the next floor. Pretty much it feels like for no reason, unless you use the game's antenna mechanic here, which is going to be Envoy's Authority, which gives your highest attack character extinction. Considering how much of a headache the first floor is, we're not going to do that, but I still will explain if you want to know how to use Envoy's Authority, how to get it, and how best to employ it. All right. As for Sinful Angelica herself, anytime someone on her team dies, everyone else gets faster and they hit harder. Additionally, she gets combat readiness every single time you end your turn and you have some amount of souls that is five or more. So you don't want to have souls. You just want to use your souls as fast as possible. Additionally, when she would receive lethal damage, she instead goes to one HP and gets five undispellable skill nullifiers. Now, if she takes a turn after getting five skill nullifiers, you instantly, instantly lose the fight. So it is essentially a race against time. It's, a, it's almost a no-win scenario on this floor. If you kill any of the adds, it makes Angelica and everyone else stronger. If you try to wait it out, you'll take too much AoE damage. The only real ways to deal with it are kill her before they kill you, right? Her and all of her adds. Or use the Envoy's Authority, like I said. Now, to make this even worse, you have to deal with the first floor, which has a Dark Gargoyle as well as a Radiant Gargoyle. You advance past this floor when you kill the Dark Gargoyle. The problem is, at the start of the battle, he will use Plummeting Stone Pillar, which has a 50% chance to increase the skill cooldown twice by one turn of everyone on your team. So it is actually possible to just start this fight most of the time with no cooldowns on your team whatsoever. And the thing is, every time you hit one of the gargoyles, they get faster and they hit harder. Additionally, every time you hit the dark gargoyle, there is a chance that he gets a defense buff, dispels all debuffs from him, and gains a 100% chance to counter you until he takes a turn. And again, he hits like a truck and he resets your cooldowns on his turn. That sucks. The light one is a little bit better. Instead of getting a counter buff, he gets an attack buff. But otherwise, he's basically the same exact thing. To get the Envoy's Authority buff, you have to kill the Radiant Gargoyle and then the Dark Gargoyle. But again, these things hit incredibly hard and they introduce a ton of RNG. The kill condition, the win condition for how I'm going to do this for is rush Dark Gargoyle as fast as possible. Do not attack him when he has a counter buff. Hopefully we get lucky and he doesn't get it too many times. And then on the Sinful Angelica floor, blitz her, use all of her souls as fast as we possibly can to kill her dead before we have to deal with any of the mushrooms, the Lich, all of her mechanics. That is the tried and true way to beat this floor. Again, if you want to try to grind it out and kill the Radiant Gargoyle to get the authority, and then work on the mushrooms and kill Sinful Angelica as intended, you are welcome to do so. That is brutally difficult, in my opinion. Just blitz the floor as fast as possible. Your entire like clear time on this floor is like three to four minutes. It is a very short run. Just keep trying until you get things right. Let's talk about who we're playing. Adventure Raz is our tank because of Command Strike. It is a guaranteed dual attack and a defense break which allows us to obviously, one, kill the Gargoyle as fast as possible, two, get Sinful Angelica as low as possible, as quickly as possible, and three, it counts as two hits versus our 
uh, skill nullifier phase. So he, in my opinion, is the mandatory tank for this whole thing. Aureus here is the artifact, health percentage necklace, health percentage ring, boots are speed. Tamarin is the best healer overall for this because of, obviously, the fact that she cleanses, heals, gives attack buff, all those wonderful things. But also, Serene Tune is another copy of the Command Strike from Raz. So that is, again, good for getting off of floor one as fast as possible. Good for doing as much damage to Simple Angelica and also getting rid of two skill nullifiers in the skill nullifier phase. As for also, by the way, her artifacts here, I recommend uh, Wanderer's Potion Vial just because there's stuns throughout this fight. Speed on the boots, health percentage on the necklace and ring, right? Next character that we're going to be playing is Camilla. She is freely available through the game's connections, right? You want boots of speed, attack percentage ring, crit, uh, hit damage here on the necklace, and then Daydream Joker as our artifact. We're playing her because when she has attack buff, which she gets from Tactical Maneuver, her S2, which you should have minus one turn cooldown, her S1 is a defense break and a guaranteed dual attack. Basically, Flashing Blade, when she has attack buff, is just Raz's S2. She's a second copy of Raz when you think about it. If you don't want to play Camilla and you have the character, the tried and true character that most people will play for this is Kitty Clarissa. Kitty Clarissa is a insanely good Abyss hero from this point onwards. If you have her, you can invest in her and use her over Camilla in almost every single run that we'll be using Camilla for from here until the end in Abyss 120. But for those of you who don't have her, Camilla is going to be your next best option. You almost assuredly will need to play either Camilla or Kitty Clarissa. Pick one. There is not really a substitute. You must play one of them. As for our primary damage dealer, I'm going to be using Commander Lorena because she is freely available from the game's connections and has basically been the bedrock for all of these beginner abyss guides that we've been doing throughout this series. A better character for this floor than Commander Lorena will be Taranor Guard if you have him, right? You build him basically exactly the same way. You're going to want him at level 60, 6 star Awoken. But for the most part, whoever you decide to play, whether it's Lorena or Taranor Guard, it's going to be Daydream Joker here as the artifact, attack percentage as your boots, attack percentage as your ring, critical hit damage as your necklace. Now that you know the actual mechanics of the fight and you see the team, let's jump into it. You'll see this is a very, very short fight with a lot of RNG. Let's see if we can get it on the first try. I will let you know at the end of this video how many tries it took for me to actually post the winning clear. Because again, this thing is an RNG fiesta. All right, so at the start, he uses his ultimate. We got good RNG, right? We got to keep our cooldowns here on these characters. So now we get to go for the attack buff. And we are praying that we don't actually have him proc his counter buff. So it's a, a four out of five chance that we're in the clear. And of course, right on time, we get counter. We can't hit him anymore, sadly. So now all we can do is hit the Radiant Golem instead. Don't want to incur the damage taken from that. Lorena is taking a beating, so we'll go here again. Alright, we can go S3 here. Heal up here. Now, he's at a point that's very interesting because I don't want to kill him right away because I don't have idle mode. I will die if I don't have idle mode. So, we're going to go here and get our defense buff up. And we don't want to kill the gargoyle. We really don't. Unlucky counter. So let's try to go here on the light one. Alright, so we go attack buff here versus Angelica. Sadly... We're kind of in a bad spot because we don't have idle anytime soon. So we really need to make this count. We're going to soul burn here. We need to keep our souls low for Angelica. Same thing. Soul burn here. Good S here. S2 here. You. We can S2 here. Didn't get the defense break. It's here. 
Soul burn here. Unlucky. No defense breaks. All right, let's see if we can still get it. Kill three. This should hopefully put her to lethal damage. There we go. So now we have to hit her five more times. So let's go one here. Let's go two here. So we're going to go here like this. Idle moan. Hit Sam for Angelica here. Hit her here. And then hit her here for lethal damage. And that is Abyss 109 in a nutshell. Like I said, the whole run takes less than three minutes. It's just, do you get RNG? For your reference, this was the fifth time I went through this since I left you guys on the previous part where I explained team mechanics. So five runs total to get the RNG to line up like this. Your mileage may vary. When I did the initial clear, it was only two runs. Uh, I've had people tell me sometimes that it takes them 30, 40 runs to get the RNG needed in order to clear with a team like this. Again, this floor is just nonsense. I wish you the best of luck. May the RNG gods be in your favor. Any other questions, let me know down in the comment section below. And if you have a different team that doesn't involve Lorena or Taranor Guard that you think makes it simpler, let your fellow players know that as well down in the comment section below. As always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll see you all in Abyss Floor 110. Have a good day now.